Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Started Off Solid asked for some more information about keeping ivory millipedes, so that's what this video is all about. I've been keeping a few species of millipede for about the past five years, and I've bred a couple of them. I haven't kept ivory millipedes for nearly as long, so this video is going to start out with a general introduction to millipede care, and then I'll focus in more on what I've learned about ivory millipedes specifically. First, let's talk about millipede enclosures. A lot of millipede keepers prefer to use plastic tubs, and they're great for many reasons. They're not very expensive, you can customize ventilation, and they hold the proper humidity that millipedes need, and you can choose the size based on the needs of the specific millipede species that you're keeping. So I keep all of my millipedes in plastic tubs of an appropriate size. Millipedes don't need a lot of ventilation because you do want to hold the humidity in, but they do need some, and depending on the species and the particular setup, I usually cut or drill some holes in the sides of the container near the top, or sometimes in the top of the container, and then cover them with some fine fabric like chiffon that prevents insects from entering. Uh, it's also helpful if you can find a lid that seals tightly to help prevent those insects from slipping through the cracks. Substrate is, of course, very, very important to millipedes, just like it is to isopods, if you've seen it in my isopod videos. Substrate is what they eat, it's what they spend their time in, it's where they get their hydration, it's extremely important. So, you don't want to skimp on substrate. Uh, recently, I've been using a recipe by Mickey M, and I'll put a link in the description to her recipe. Her very fussy millipede substrate is what it's called, that's the title of the thread. Anyway, to give you a basic idea of how it works, one third of it consists of organic leaf compost, one third of it consists of wood products, and in my case what I am able to source is um, alder pellets that are intended for use with barbecue grills, and I soak them and then crush them up and they get a very wet sawdust consistency, as well as aspen shavings used for um, small animal bedding, like for rodents and snakes and things like that. And then the last third is from fallen hardwood leaves from non-toxic trees. So oak, maple, cottonwood, and many others are possible. And I crush all that up, I add some calcium, like some ground oyster shell, or you can use ground eggshell, some sort of calcium, it's just a fair, fairly small amount of that. And there you have a substrate. Millipedes like a fairly deep substrate. A rule of thumb used with many millipede keepers is that the depth of the substrate in the container should be about as deep as the millipede is long. So that's quite a bit more than you might use for isopods, for example. And once you have the substrate, you need to make sure that it maintains the correct moisture levels. Uh, substrate for millipedes should be somewhat moist, but it should never be sopping or soaked. If you can take a handful of the substrate in your hand and um, kind of crush it in your hand, and a lot of water drips out, that's a bad sign that it's too wet, but when you do crush it, it should feel moist, but you shouldn't be able to squeeze a lot of water out of it. And now let's talk about supplemental food. I say supplemental because the main source of nutrition for the millipedes will be their substrate itself. They will eat it. However, it's good to vary their diet, and one good thing you can use is fruit. If you use things like bananas, oranges, apples, fairly soft fruits. Um, they tend to like that. Um, I've given mine mango and uh, avocado, various things like that. They also like soft vegetables. I provide mine with sweet potatoes, um, frozen peas which have been thawed and slipped out of their skins, squash, zucchini, and various other soft vegetables. You get the idea. I also offer mine Rapashi Bug Burger which they really, really seem to like. And once again, because these are supplemental foods, you only need to offer them once or twice a week. And you should remove any uneaten food at the first sign of it going moldy. Temperatures for millipedes should be approximately room temperatures, avoid extremes. Over 80 is probably not great for most of them, and if it's much below 70, that's probably a little too cool, but it does depend on the species. There are tropical species and more temperate species, so keep that in mind as well. One recommendation I have for enclosure mates is springtails. Springtails help to uh, reduce problems with mold and generally keep the enclosure clean. Um, I don't necessarily recommend isopods with millipedes because some people have had issues with isopods eating newly molted millipedes. So let's talk a little bit about ivory millipedes specifically. 
Now, ivory millipedes, scientifically known as Chicobolus spinigerus, are from the southeastern United States. Many of them are collected in Florida, but they're also bred in captivity. This species gets its name, ivory millipede, from its coloration. There are several morphs, but the most common morph has this ivory color accentuated by these dark bands. It reminds a lot of people of a backgammon game. They're a medium-sized millipede. They reach about three and a half to maybe four inches. They don't get all that big. And they're a good beginner species for many reasons. They're inexpensive, they're very hardy, they're active, and they spend a lot of time on the surface. There are some millipedes that just really spend so much time in the substrate that you don't see them all that often. So ivory millipedes are a good choice for people who want something they're going to see on the surface a lot. They're also really easy to distinguish. If you want to distinguish a male ivory millipede from a female ivory millipede, it's, it's pretty simple to do. Once they reach a certain size, the males develop a saddle. And as you can see in this photo here, this male has some enlarged segments um, up near his head and all those enlarged segments are known as the saddle and females lack this structure as you can see. Now the lifespan of ivory millipedes according to Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace is about five to ten years so you're getting a millipede that'll last uh, a good long time. So those are some of the reasons that they make great pets. My female recently descended below the surface for about two weeks. I'm not sure if she was molting but this tends to be the season of the year when they also lay eggs. And if my female is old enough, and if that's what she did, I may be seeing some eggs soon. So there's a little introduction to millipede care in general and to ivory millipedes. Thanks for watching. I release videos every Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. I just wanted to give you a little bit of the story behind this shot. I took the millipede out to do a little filming and he appeared to be hungry and started nibbling on my hand, which of course didn't hurt at all. It was more like a little tickle. But I figured I would offer him a piece of bug burger and he was indeed very hungry and just went to town right in front of the camera and you get to see his cute little face.